Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Love Your RCSLT Hubs. And we hope that by the end of today, you really will. So I'm going to start by introducing myself. My name is Kamini Gatok, and I'm Chief Executive at the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists. And today, joining me on the webinar are two presenters. I'm really pleased to introduce Megan David, who's Assistant Practitioner Speech Language Therapy at NHS Worcestershire, and she's representing the West Midlands Hub. And also Carly Hartshorn, who's a Specialist Speech and Language Therapist at NHS Rochdale, representing the North West Hub. So before we start, just a few uh, housekeeping tips. The webinar is going to be 45 minutes long with questions at the end. You can interact by sending in chat messages at any time by using the chat button and also send in questions by using the Q&A button. The event is being recorded, so there's a link that you can see on the slide for uh, the webinars when they're uploaded. And we hope that you encourage your colleagues to listen in if they've not been able to join us today. We do hope that you'll fill in the survey that will pop up at the end of the webinar. The link will also be included in the post event email. So thank you in advance for completing the webinar survey. Very important to help us to inform how we run them in the future. And lastly, but very importantly, Kaylee is going to be on hand in case you need any help. OK, so I've just got a slide here which outlines what we hope the um, aims and objectives of the webinar will be in terms of what you'll get out of it, that you'll have more of an understanding about the hubs in terms of the concept of them and why they were created, that you will hear from two colleagues representing two different hubs on what they've done so far and what difference it has made to members. And finally, to hear more about how you might want to get involved or how you could get involved in your local RCSLT hub. OK, so hubs, what are they? Well, they're a bit virtual, I guess. People always wonder whether they are you know, located in a particular building, but actually that isn't the case. As I said, they're virtual networks. And here's a map that shows the networks across the four devolved nations of the UK. As you can see, the geographical spread is quite different depending on which region you might be in. But what's really, really important is that the purpose of the hubs is to bring together the talent from across the profession in the same regions so that we can work to support each other and create close links across the membership. The RCSLT membership has grown to just over 17 and a half thousand members. So you can imagine that actually working together and uh, supporting each other becomes more and more important. Particularly, we think, in areas of the country where services have become more fragmented and leadership is an issue. And as you can see from this slide, that the aim of the hubs is to be as inclusive as possible. They're for all our members, for everybody working together, whether that's working in the independent sector, working in public services, in the charity sector, whether you're a newly qualified practitioner, speech language therapy assistant, somebody who's a leader and manager. You may also have a role within the RCSLT community in terms of advice and support. So you might be a leadership mentor or a clinical advisor. You may also be leading a SEN, a clinical excellence network. Whatever you do and whoever you are, it's really important that you're part of the network. But let's not also forget our service users. It's really important that wherever possible, we involve them in everything we do. So they are also part of the bubbles that you can see around this um, slide. OK, so I'm just going to move on now to um, what opportunities there are that hubs bring by building ne the network of the profession. And these are just examples of the sort of things that you're going to hear about that hubs provide an opportunity for. So they could be there to help you share ideas for service innovation. It might be that you want to learn about how to influence into the system, that you see that there are services who are managing to get to decision makers, for example, in England, where you've got integrated care systems being developed. So what is the opportunity to learn from those who are doing really well in those sorts of regions? So really, they do provide an opportunity to provide continuing professional development. 
it might be that you want to do something that's specific to a particular area and that's really up to you so whether you work with SENS or advisors on that that's really something that, to think about if it's about workforce development we're very aware that there are differences of in terms of challenges but also opportunities for the workforce going forward you also might want to think about research and get some of the research champions or the networks to present to talk to you a bit about some of the opportunities that exist to support building on the evidence base. And let's not forget awareness raising. Through the Giving Voice campaign, we're really keen to promote the use of social media and influencing techniques to raise the profile of the important work that you do. And what's really critical is the impact that you make for our service users and involving them in that process. So let's just have a little look at some of the things we've got to show you here. Here's some really good examples of um, Twitter conversations that we've captured of what people have said about their hub and what they've enjoyed. Uh, and I'm, as I said, you're going to hear more from colleagues in a few minutes. So how can you get involved and where is your hub? So if you want to know more, do look on the links that are presented in this slide and think about um, how you might get in touch with your hub. Also, I just wanted to highlight that, as you hopefully all know, it's 75 years since we were set up. So we're hoping that you've all got really great celebrations planned in the diary to celebrate the 75 years of the organization. But also just to highlight that in Jude, we're going to have a specific spotlight on speech and language therapy. And we're encouraging members to uh, really use a week in June, the 1st to the 7th, to try and do as much activity as possible. So we try and really create that uh, mobilization that we want to see in the profession and a real buzz um, to get as much as we can going on social media to share stories and photos, but also to very much engage service users. Because on, in June, service users are going to be the focus and the theme. So just to give you a bit of a, a head up, heads up on that one. OK, so I'm going to now move to present our first presenter uh, from the Hub. It's Megan David. So over to you, Megan. Thanks, Cameron. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Megan David and welcome to my presentation about the West Midlands Royal College Hub. My aim today is to talk you through what our hub is about, events and projects we have been involved with and how you can get involved. So how did I get involved? In 2014, I became a speech and language therapy assistant for the Children's NHS Speech and Language Therapy Service in Worcestershire. I was heavily involved with promoting the wonderful work that our service does on Twitter through my own profile and engaging with updates and campaigns that RCSLT do such a good job of promoting. Twitter has fast become a great way to engage with others and hear about changes and developments at a rapid rate. I was then approached on Twitter by Gillian Rudd, admin for the Hub's Twitter page and member of the steering group to be part of a Twitter takeover on behalf of the Hub. It was a brilliant experience which helped develop my knowledge even further. Then around six months later, Gillian invited me to join the Hub steering group and attend a meeting. It felt pretty daunting, but it has been another excellent experience meeting other members of the profession and building towards creating a stronger community in speech and language therapy. Now, more specifically, what is our hub in the West Midlands all about? Here is our poster explaining all the key elements. So our mission statement, as you can see in the middle of the slide, is our aim. It's what we hope to do in the hub for you. Our steering group is currently made up of a range of individuals from different services and backgrounds. We all bring different ideas and thoughts to discussions, which enables us to provide a well-rounded hub service. We all have different roles within our steering group, as described here again in the middle section of the poster. Ideally, our vision would be to have a project group who would be responsible for undertaking RCSLT projects and tasks or carrying out research in the West Midlands area. And then an event group 
who are responsible for planning and delivering the annual hub event. Hopefully, we will be able to have enough people in the steering group after our next hub event to allow for this. There is also information about our previous hub events of the past four years. I have another slide later on talking about our events as it is another way to get involved while simultaneously adding to your CPD. The photograph you see toward the bottom right is taken from our last event in 2019, which was another huge success. We have another event on the way, which some of you may already be aware of, but keep listening and I can tell you more shortly. There is also a brief list of the projects we have been involved with in the bottom right corner and ones we continue to look into and gather information about from the local area. We also detail ways to keep in touch with us. Twitter, as I've mentioned already, is the quickest way to get in touch with us. But alternatively, check out the Royal College website or you can get in touch with Michelle or Helen, our hub chairs, via the email address in the bottom left of your screen. And finally, there is the engagement swish on the left hand side of the poster. On the next slide, I'll go into more detail about this and how involved you can become. So the swish, as you can see, is our attempt to formalise roles within the hub and assign to HCPC standards in the process so that more people have ownership of what they can do to support the profession and the hub. It's our visual representation of involvement. So let me take you through it, starting from the bottom. Unengaged, you're unaware of the West Midlands Hub and its purpose. Observing and following, you're aware of the role of the Hub in providing a link between Royal College and local practitioners. You may follow the activities of the Hub on social media and will take an interest in events and information that is shared from time to time in Bulletin or the website. Endorsing. You disseminate information to colleagues. You promote the work of the hub, which includes attendance and participation at events. Contributing. You may regularly contribute to the work of the hub and in event planning. Moving up to owning, where you may invest time in the West Midlands hub, being actively involved in event planning and contributing at events. You also play a part in encouraging others to become involved. And finally, to leading. You're leading and engaging others to ensure the West Midlands Hub fulfills the RCSLT objectives. Now, I'm not suggesting any of you jump straight into a leading role, but many of you may now realise where you are on SWISH. And hopefully many of you want to increase that level of engagement to some degree. The aim for today is for you to begin to feel involved in some way. Wherever that may be, it's a starting point and it may be you want to broaden your experiences within your workplace. Today's webinar should support you in how to go about that. The West Midlands Hub covers a number of counties right in the heart of England. Our steering group meetings take place a few times a year, and this can be more depending on upcoming events or need. We meet at Birmingham City University, and in particular, the City South Campus in Edgbaston. We are flexible. We managed to successfully coordinate the final stages of a hub event over email, but nothing beats face to face contact. Our meetings tend to last a few hours and we frequently liaise over email with agendas and minutes. So everyone in the steering group is included at every stage. Now, our events are a great way for practitioners across the workforce to come together to share and enjoy in what we do. We aim to run an event on a yearly basis. As an example, last year we held our event at the City Centre campus of Birmingham City University. We aim to have some consistency through our events, usually a talk from Royal College regarding any updates within the profession, and then talks accommodating both adults and paediatric practice. And here on the right hand side of the slide are some details about our upcoming event in March, titled evidence-based practice, everything you need to know and more. This is a ticketed event with prices starting at £5 for the day's event, including refreshments and lunch. More information, including booking details, can be found via the RCSLT website. It should be a really exciting day. A lot of effort goes into these events each year, 
and our aim is to continue to bring you relevant, high quality events going forward. In the future, it may also be good to link up more with the East Midlands, as we often carry out similar events. We discussed this at a recent group meeting, particularly with the RCSLT 75th anniversary this year. If anyone has any thoughts on this, please do get in touch. As I mentioned earlier, my first involvement with the Hub was via a Twitter takeover. We have done two in as many years and they have proved immensely successful for both the individuals taking over and the members and readers who get involved and interact. They are a great way to showcase the work of individuals and organisations across the patch and increase people's understanding of the many sides of speech and language therapy. As part of the takeover, you receive access to the Hub account for one week and are encouraged to tweet about all that is relevant to the area of speech and language therapy. As an assistant, it was a wonderful opportunity to showcase what as assistants we do in our service and the brilliant jobs we get to undertake alongside our therapists. What was so exciting about the most recent takeover is that we've had a really broad range of individuals and teams who ran the account. It ensured we captured the impact of speech and language therapy across the West Midlands area. So the benefits of being part of your local hub are huge. Being able to liaise with other members of a similar community with shared interests and goals or who wouldn't want to be a part of that. It helps create the opportunity for conversations and collaborations across sectors and specialisms. Personally, for me, it has helped me connect with other assistants. One of the tweets I put out as part of my takeover had a really positive response. It's really pleasing to hear from colleagues across the country who want to share and connect. This wouldn't have been possible had we not had the platform of the hub to start from. I've included a couple of quotes here from individuals who are involved with the hub. What's lovely to hear is the positivity that comes from being part of the local speech and language community. What's also a great benefit of being part of your hub is you can feed information back to the steering group to pass on to Royal College. In our steering group meetings, we often have these discussions and this frequently gets back fed back to Hub England meetings. It means that our profession can keep on growing and evolving to be the best it can be. So hopefully this webinar has given you an insight into what our Hub is all about and you're now thinking, how do I get involved? We are looking for new members who want to share in our vision and take things forward. So how can you go about it? Well, the easiest way initially is Twitter. Social media can be a scary prospect for some, and we do appreciate that, but it's worth taking a look and seeing what you can gain from it. If you think it's for you, follow the Hub page, drop us a tweet. Once you get a follow back, you can message the Hub privately to share your thoughts. However, if Twitter isn't for you, then access information about the Hub via the Royal College website or bulletin, and of course, events. You may want to consider adopting a role from our Swish and being a link champion in your organisation. The link champions enable us in the steering group to hear how things are going in your workplace or organisation and how effectively information is being shared. And who knows, this time next year, it could be you doing a Twitter takeover. And finally for today, I'll leave you with this. In our steering group, one of our primary aims is to be there for you. We all need a helping hand sometimes, whatever the circumstances, and as part of the Hub Steering Group, that is what we try to provide. A helping hand to understand and disseminate information to you out there on the ground, whether you are a newly qualified or experienced therapist, student, assistant or service user. We all play a part in our Hub and in the bigger world of speech and language therapy, so it's important we all feel valued. Love your Hub because it's there for you. Thank you all for listening and we hope to hear from lots of you ready to get involved. I'll now hand over to Carly for her slides. Thank you, Megan. Um, so my name's Carly. I'm a um, speech language therapist working in um, the NHS in Rochdale. Um, I am also uh, proud to be a member of the executive committee for the RCSLT Northwest Hub. So, who are we? Well, 
the Northwest Hub is a very active hub with um, represent representatives on the executive committee from um, the whole Northwest uh, geographical footprint. We have um, representatives from all sectors, including um, uh, the independent sector, NHS um, and education and charitable sectors as well. And we cover all different um, clinical areas, so adult, ALD um, and paediatric as well. And um, all of the committee members are um, sort of carry out their roles alongside their, um, their substantive work as well. We're really well supported by the University of Manchester, Manchester and Metropolitan University and um, UCLan as well. Um, and we work very um, strongly um, and closely with local networks, including the uh, Northwest uh, AHP network, Profnet, um, the Local Assistance Network and Hub Forum England as well. So the Hub aims to seek the views and opinions of members in the Northwest and to use these to really positively influence the profession at a regional and um, national level as well. So the next slide goes through the strategic plan for the Northwest Hub. Now this is um, uh, the original plan that was um, from when the hub was originally set up and it is something that we are um, looking at at the moment. So if anyone has any feedback on, um, on how you think the hub um, should work, then um, we'd love to hear from you. So the hub aims to um, connect, uh, we're a virtual forum that connects members and provides um, a local uh, and regional voice for the profession. And we're a very strong network that allows member communities to connect both face to face and virtually to build really strong um, relationships and engagement around the profession. We um, use a range of methods to build those relationships and that engagement with members, including social media events um, and through the RCSLT website as well. Um, and we also look to provide and to promote local events and projects that help to share knowledge um, and learning across speech and language therapy in the Northwest. And obviously we work very closely um, to promote the work of um, college and to align with the values of college as well. So what is the story of the Northwest Hub so far? Well, when the um, hub was originally launched, we um, came up with the hashtag SLT value Northwest. And, um, and on the, at the launch event, um, we attempted to really celebrate the work of uh, speech and language therapists within the Northwest uh, region. This was followed by a Clinical Excellence and Resilience Day that was really attempting to bring together speech and language therapists um, and practitioners from all areas of practice to look at the common themes and how we support one another in our um, everyday work. We then had a Conditions for Communities event that was looking at um, how we can uh, gain, uh, empower hub advocates and look at um, how we work together to support our profession across the region. We've also set up um, a range of um, social media uh, platforms. So we've got um, a Twitter profile, we've got a closed group on Facebook um, and uh, an open page as well that we've recently set up, um, which I'll come back to talk about in a, in a few minutes. And of, of course, we, um, we provide representation at lots of different events as well. So for example, the um, RCSLT uh, conferences. So we've recently had an early career event. So that was um, just last month. Uh, that was attended by around um, 40 newly qualified practitioners and 40 final year students with um, a split across um, students from the University of Manchester and Manchester Metropolitan University as well. We had some really, really positive feedback from that event with um, lots of um, requests for future events, uh, particularly looking at specific clinical discussions and more information on um, things like working abroad. The question and answer session that was hosted by four NQPs um, from different sectors was really, really well enjoyed. And I think that could have gone on for a lot longer than it did. We also had a session that was facilitated by uh, Caroline Poole from NHS Improvement around working as an allied health professional and what you can do um, to influence the profession as well. And we had a session on what to expect from the first few months within your, um, your, your first role. 
There was then um, parallel sessions on um, working with different caseloads and working within research as well to gain more information on um, on what happens and how you can go into these um, different uh, areas of practice. The RCSLT uh, Northwest Hub is also hosting its first webinar, its first hubinar in um, March 2020. And that's to coincide with um, the RCSLT 75 celebrations. The first webinar is going to um, consider what SLT value uh, Northwest means to practitioners in our region and look at the career paths of practitioners in the Northwest. So looking at um, looking back on um, where uh, those career pathways have developed from and looking into the future at new projects that are taking place um, in the area. So uh, for things like the uh, Greater Manchester School Readiness Programme. Um, the webinar is going to be supported by local SLT leaders, and we're really uh, hoping that uh, membership will provide the questions so that um, we're making sure that we are engaging the um, the members within the Northwest Hub in finding out what they want to know from the people that they want that information from. Within the Northwest um, region we're really keen to support speech and language therapy practitioners at all levels so one of the things that we've been really promoting recently is um, support for our assistant practitioners so we've recently um, had an assistant practitioner um, become a member of the executive committee of the northwest hub um, which we're really excited about and we're also carrying out a scoping exercise and that's to look at um, the work of uh, assistants in the area. It's to look at um, things like their job titles, what training they've had and how their role has changed over, um, over the last few years. So that then we can consider um, the training and support uh, mechanisms that we can provide as a, um, a hub to, um, to support assistants in our area. And this will also um, feed into the regional um, assistant network. We're also looking at potentially um, carrying out an assistant practitioner uh, CPD day over the uh, coming months. As I mentioned before, um, our um, social media presence has, um, has really increased over the last 12 to 18 months. We're proud to have nearly um, 1,500 followers on Twitter, and that's really thanks to um, the fab work of our student representatives on the um, exec executive committee. Um, both of the uh, student reps are um, just finishing um, their degree programmes at the moment, so there will be um, some uh, some roles coming up if there are any um, students out there who are keen to get involved in the executive committee. We also have nearly 300 members um, on a closed Facebook group. The Facebook group was set up um, so that we can really facilitate those conversations between um, between hub members um, and the RCSLT um, as a whole, um, but also look at how we're providing support to one another and, um, and answering um, questions amongst ourselves. We've recently also set up a, um, an open Facebook page so that then we can engage with the wider um, speech and language therapy community uh, within the Northwest region as well. So um, if you um, have a look on Facebook and follow um, the links on the slide, you can, um, you can give us a like and, and um, get involved in the conversation there as well. I've also included on this slide contact details for our, our chair and secretary. As I mentioned before, um, all roles on the executive committee are um, are voluntary um, and alongside um, you know substantive jobs that people carry out as well um, so just bear with us in, um, in getting back to you. And what we've really found is that um, particularly with the um, social media profiles it's allowed for really easy interaction with the membership and it's something that we're really really keen to um, to keep promoting and having those two-way conversations between us um, within the Northwest and college as well so please give us a follow give us a like um, and um, as Megan mentioned before you can also um, join the hubs on, on the RCSLT um, website as well thank you very much I'm going to hand back to Kamini for the question and answer session. 
Thank you so much, both Megan and Carly. I think hopefully listeners and those who might be seeing this webinar after it's been posted on the website will think that, you know, hopefully they'll have got a lot out of the um, presentations you've given about what a hub is. As we know, across the regions, um, the structure in terms of steering groups and committee members does vary, and that is very much driven through local requirements or regional requirements, sorry. Um, so do contact your regional hub and find out more about how they're structured, and you can do that um, through the RCSLT website. So I hope, as I said, people have got a better understanding of what a hub is. So it's particularly important to remember that there is an opportunity to engage with members both virtually and through face-to-face -face events, which might be set up. Um, just got one question, and I'm, I'm going to see if uh, Carly would like to kick this one off in terms of a response. So uh, my local hub doesn't seem to have much going on. How can I start getting involved when there's not much to get involved in? Carly, any tips? I think certainly from um, the Northwest Hub, um, I think Megan's uh, presentation reflected that as well, um, is that um, social media is a really good way to find out if there's things going on in your um, local area. Um, so as I mentioned, we've got um, a really um, strong Twitter following um, and we've got um, the Facebook page and uh, group as well. Um, but also, um, checking out the RCSLT um, website for more information and um, and contacting the hub's um, email address as well to gain um, more information about where your local um, hub is and, and um, if they've got anything going on. Again, any tips from you? Yeah, I think I so know how social media kind of works in this day and age. It's such a really powerful medium. Um, and I think for us in particular in the West Midlands, um, the Twitter page has really helped kind of reach out to lots of different people across the area um, and further as well. Um, so I'd say kind of Twitter is kind of the biggest kind of push from our end. But as I say, the hubs um, on the website as well, just to find out a bit more information, just to see what events are going on, um, if there's any research or projects that people can just sort of get involved in um, at whatever stage and whatever level. Thank you very much. So another question we've had is about CPD. So somebody saying, I get a lot of my CPD through my organisation. What else can the local hub provide? I think both of you gave a sense and a flavour of that. Do you want to build on Anything you've already said, Megan, should I start with you first? Um, I think probably um, kind of looking at kind of the events. Um, and I know we've got an event coming up in the next kind of um, few weeks or so in the West Midlands. Um, and I think that local hubs can probably provide that. They've got that sharing of information from Royal College. Um, I know we've got a uh, March event. We've got different talks that are coming from um, adult and paediatric practitioners. Um, and I think that that just gives a sense of what's going on within the West Midlands area um, and that people can share kind of their advice and what's going on. Um, so I kind of see that as a really great way that events that kind of face-to-face -face networking and, and liaising with people that you just don't get to passively do in your organisational workforce. It just brings that wider, bigger, bigger picture. Thank you. And Carly? I think for me, the um, the hub has been a really nice kind of interface between the um, the national message of um, CPD um, that's going on. And um, as Megan mentioned, sharing those kind of um, research um, on, on Twitter and on social media, um, but also then looking at what's um, what's wanted in the local area as well and what's um, the questions that um, that local practitioners have had so that then we can respond to that and, and provide something that's um, a little bit more tailored to um, to what what is wanted regionally. That's great, isn't it? So what, what I'm hearing is an opportunity to go outside of your own organisation and learn from those around you because there might be some opportunities to pick up developments that you might not know about in detail and also to get involved in projects which in a way is stretching skills if you actually actively get involved but also I think from Carly I'm hearing the opportunity to listen to what members are saying their priorities are so to create the opportunities for not just networking but providing a a CPD opportunity that meets those needs. Um, and I think what's really interesting is from both of you is hearing, and obviously Megan is a speech therapy assistant, is to understand that this is for everybody. So understanding what the needs are of the profession 
And as I said at the beginning, that we have 17 and a half thousand members now working across the UK. So it's really important that we create these structures where that voice is really heard. And um, it's quite hard, isn't it, if you're really very big to get a, a, a voice heard. Um, so at, at a regional level, hopefully that enables people to connect in a good way. Um, one of the questions was about the time it takes to be part of a hub. But what I've heard from both of you is, is that you can you can engage at different levels. So you can engage through Twitter and social media, but also get involved in the steering group at a leadership level, which I assume would create, you know, would require more time. Um, have you have you got any reflections on that question? So, Carly, should I start with you this time? Yeah, I think. Um... We've very much talked about social media has been a, a kind of quick and easy way of getting involved yeah, um, in the hub. And I think, you know, you can you can just follow um, the hub on Facebook or um, or on Twitter um, and um, and join in those conversations um, as they're pertinent to the case that you're working with or of interest to you um, from my perspective, um, I was uh, previously on the membership and communications board for um, RCSLT. And so when the opportunity came up to be a part of um, the Northwest Executive Hub, um, I was um, really keen to kind of um, to take that kind of extra step because um, I get really kind of excited and passionate about um, all things speech therapy. Um, so having that additional um, kind of um, ability to engage was something that I was really keen to do. Um, we meet uh, four times a year, um, which is for half a day. Um, but we also kind of liaise, like Megan was saying before, via um, via email um, around certain projects and things that are happening as well. So um, I think, you know, you're going from a very kind of quick and easy way of um, engaging to, um, to much more um, time. Um, but that very much is dependent on on what you want to do. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with Carly. I say my kind of journey started from just being on Twitter um, and kind of immersing myself in that, and it's so easy to kind of get into, um, and then obviously being approached and just be having that you know further liaison has then enabled me to then um, be a member on the steering group, um, and then hearing more, as I say, about different kind of professionals within our region and um, hearing what's going on and obviously developing our swish which means then that people can kind of take ownership of where um, they kind of feel that they can become involved and if it is just following and it's just then kind of seeing what's going on on social media but then as Carly said it can then develop into being part of um, a more detailed group um, attending meetings so it can it's what you want to get out of it um but there's kind of a place for for everyone on there I think it's right through to opportunities like we've got today to definitely come down to um to london to college um to be involved in the webinar today that's brilliant so i hope that those who've been listening feel really inspired to get involved um at whatever level, as you said, as I think both Megan and Carly have said, it's really up to you. And it might be that you're at a different point in your career journey where you want to do more. Um, and certainly connecting with members and having a leadership role on an executive committee feels like a really positive step that both Megan and Carly have taken. So I just want to thank you both for that. It's brilliant, really great, uh, really important for the profession to have leadership at every level. So very impressed with that. So we've come to the end of the questions and I just want to um, just say thank you to everybody, but also remind you of the next webinar, which is going to be coming up and it's going to be on the 3rd of March. Uh, it'll be around celebrating multiculturalism for the European Day of Speech and Language Therapy. And it's at a different time. It's going to be at 4.15 in the afternoon. So do put that in your diaries and we look forward to you joining us then. Thank you very much everybody for listening in and thanks again to Megan and to Carly.